Evening one and all. Welcome back. Seven o'clock Sunday night. It's a rags and jacks. So, uh, you want to do the the honors? If you want to donate, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, the links are in the description. To buy me a coffee and PayPal. I would like to thank. Hold on. I'd like to thank Cat and Louise and Mouse Cat from last week. Um, Thank you very much. So, uh, if you want to join us, you can find the links to Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble in the description for all this video. Um, if it all goes well, we'll just keep this one up. If it doesn't, you'll find it on the other channels, on the other videos. Let's say uh, hello to a few people. Oh, Joe Marshall's in the chat. Uh, Toffee's in. Uh, Johnny's in. Tricky Woo's in. Colonel Custer's in, Sensum's in. Sensum starts at half eight tonight, folks. Um, and I have a ball bleeping at me here, half off. Lovely Truth's in, Rob's in, and um, Jazz Smash is in. Who else is in? Well, odd. Uh, this is Miss, Miss Myrtle, Jane. Mellard's in. Um, and that's a bit I believe Wellard's one of your lot, is he? Joe? Is Wellard one of your lot, Joe? Yeah, he's one of ours. He, he said I, I he, would, he, I he was going to um, come on tonight, but I don't know whether he wants to, like, you know? Yeah, but, well, um, he, you know, we get a chat with you out of the way if he wants to jump on. Um, I just yeah. recognise the, the white the white eagle of Snowden in his um avatar there, so well done, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, thank you for everyone. And Sensum Communum uh, has downvoted his own intro music there, so in fact... <laughs> he said, Do we, we need some more new intro music. This one's rubbish. But he made it. So <laughs> you can only him for that. Uh, Streaky, <laughs> good to see you, Chaz. Sorry I missed you guys all last week. Um, I've been having a rough as hell time with this um, sinus infection. Uh, and I'm, I've just been treating the um, symptoms. And, but I've got a, a proper appointment. I think they're going to have to start looking up and doing a bit of investigation. So hopefully that'll be the end <laughs> of that nonsense. Toffee, I, I need you to reach out to me somehow and let me know whether you still want to jump onto the um, dog stream in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, so just so, somehow um, get hold of me. Um, Al Max sent me his email over Twitter. So mm -hmm. uh, Toffee wants to get me his email um, uh, via whatever. Um, we can do it through that. Is now, I, with... I do understand why people... Uh, suddenly, um, and Joe, you might want to want to chime in on this as well. But I do understand why some people um, are uh, are sort of leaving Telegram. Some people have got personal reasons, but obviously their terms and conditions. Sensum was kind enough because I wouldn't have known because I'm not that kind of person to read small print. I wouldn't have known that their terms and conditions have changed recently, where your channels were private. No one could report them. What went on in yours? You you, you police them yourself. But now there's report buttons, and that's on across all the different platforms. Uh, so whether you've got it on iOS or whether you've got it from the Play Store, or whether you've got the APK, I believe it can all be reported now. So just be a bit more careful. If you, if you were a bit more, if you were a bit gung ho before, I'm just saying I don't want to see anyone here um, locked up for ridiculous overreach from the government. So um, yeah, so let's introduce tonight's guest. Probably I would say our most requested and popular guest especially uh if, if the chat's anything to go by um big joe how are you doing my friend i'm all right thanks how's Great it going to hear from you. yeah we're all good here mate we're all good um we uh but we, well me and brags both follow your channel on telegram and that so we, we both see the same content that you're putting out um talking about um we were talking a little bit off air and that talking about <clears throat> Uh, prison people being locked up or uh political viewpoints and stuff but we hear that uh, a friend in the sense of a friend on our side has been released from prison um and he's got some seriously um draconian conditions and you know a bit more about it um joe did you want to let the people know yeah well it's sven he's been let out of prison um he's on license he's got to stay in a hostel um he's tagged as well um he's not going to be contacting a lot of people he said he's just going to keep his head down he's on he's going to be on license conditions for about 14 months um he's like he's not allowed to go on the internet at all 
Um, he's allowed to have a mobile phone, but chances are they're listening to every word that he says on there. Um, he's he's not allowed on the internet at all. If he gets caught going on the internet, he'll be straight back inside. Um, he's okay, and um, they've said that he's staying in the hostel. Um, they're going to find him somewhere to live um, because he's disabled as well. He, you know, because he's disabled and he's an ex prisoner and he's in a hostel. Uh, he's a priority for housing, so uh, they'll sort him out with uh, with somewhere to live and everything like you know. So just so everyone knows, he's all right. We're not really going to talk about him on pages because the police won't like it, you know. So uh, yeah, just to let everyone know that he's okay and he's he's doing all right. Um, any news on Big Sam? Uh, the last thing I've seen was Mark and Laura had. Uh, outside the prison um, well they did a protest outside the prison um i think he's going to be out in december um that'll be on the um 40 thing but um he's they won't let him out on tag early because when people who get locked up for the for so-called far right stuff they never get out early release on tag or anything you know so it looks like he's probably going to be out in December now. Like well, that's about a hundred days away. So, you know, it seems a long time, but right. it'll that's soon go. Like you know, that's actually a very good news. Yeah, the yeah. news on. Um, um, here's a question James. for you, Joe. Yeah, go on. What's the question? Go ahead, Joe. I was just going to say, uh, James Costello, um, a big list of people have been stopped from speaking to him, writing to him. I'm one of them. Um, I had an email, a prisoner account, and they've cancelled my account. With I've got about a tenner of credit on there, and they've taken it off me and said, uh, HM Prison Manchester have requested that I have my account deleted. So that means I can't write to anybody now. But... Um, I've tried appealing it and they're just ignoring me or they're following me off with, with ridiculous excuses. Like, you know, so I don't really know what I can do, but I was, I was Toffee's not allowed to speak to him either. Um, they did this with Sven. Nope. They, they stopped us from visiting him, stopped us from speaking to him. You know, it's like, it's not good enough that they've locked you up just for saying words they don't like that. They're going to make it hell for you while you're in there as well. You know? I expect it's going to be the yeah. same for all these people they're locking up for Facebook comments and that. Yeah, well, I, I was sitting there watching uh, the Bitneck um, just before we went live. They're just finished, I think. And uh, he was saying it's more and more draconian, draconian uh, laws that they're forcing upon us. You know, if you say something that they agree with, that's completely fine. If you say something that they disagree with, you're going down. So you have to, as Jack rightly said at the start, be very, very careful what you say online, um, because you will get bound up. Um, for oh, you'll be words. you'll be dealt with within forty eight hours if you're uh, if you're a dissident of any. Dis well, we've seen it. I mean, there you go. You know, uh, uh, what what was the um, the fifty five year old woman? Uh, this is the case that gets to me the most. 55 year old woman never been in trouble a day in her life and probably had a few too many wines saw what was going on saw the state of the country put something a little bit egregious a little bit spicy up on facebook and no one acted on it and i believe it was the only only the state the state was the only complainant so there you go yeah. now she's doing yeah. two years the, yeah the problem, the care of her, for her husband the problem, the problem is problem. with the hate crime laws, crime laws right, right is that the the wording of it is so like elastic and it's so like arbitrary to interpretation yep. that they can literally make it up as they go along you know exactly. that's a scary and, thing yeah and with sam it's like the judge said those stickers weren't illegal they were they were perfectly legal but the jury had to consider his mindset and if they thought that he was doing it because he wanted to be you know causing racial hatred which i mean 
what do they class as inciting racial hatred and how can they prove that that's even happened right and um, that's the thing is like i've been arrested for certain things that i've said right um i'll give you some examples of what i said i think the one time i got arrested it was i said what's the point of armed police being at cardiff central train station when muslims can just walk past them with a backpack on without being searched right and I also said, because some of the uh, people involved in a bomb plot in Luton worked in the airport, I said they shouldn't be allowed to work in airports, right, at all. And then I had to sit in an interview and explain what I meant. Like, I said, well, if you don't know which ones are extremists and which ones ain't, then you should stop them all from working in there. You know, Which was, which was the old um, Donald Trump's attitude, wasn't it? No, I'm yeah. just doing a blanket ban until you can sort your shit out. Yeah, I'm doing a blanket ban. So I, but what they do is when they arrest you for hate speech is they ask you to elaborate. What did you mean by that? What did you mean? And and they say things like this: Do you think that, say, you know, uh, an ethnic person reading that could have got upset by it? You know, and if you accept in the interview, oh yeah, well maybe they could like you know. Or if you say something stupid like, oh, I don't care if they did or not, they're going to nick you. And like my solicitor said to me, if you go into that interview and tell them that you've got a problem with Muslims, you're going to get nicked, right? He said, if you go in there and say it's only the Muslims that are extremists, then you'll be fine. So that's what I had to do. I had to go in and say, I'm, I don't hate Muslims. I just, I've got a problem with the ones who'd like to kill me and my people, you know, and our children. And that apparently is fine. Like, but if you did dislike Muslims, that's really should be your business, shouldn't it? And you only, know? only yours. Exactly. Yeah. So, if I was to say, well, I really particularly don't like Muslims, I'd get nicked for that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unbelievable. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, you you'd yeah, never get on. this. You never get this the other way around. You'd never oh, get no. like uh, a Muslim's going. Now, listen, if a, if a Christian read that, do you think he'd be offended? Yeah. Oh no, it's, yeah. it's fine to insult Christianity. Oh, it's fair game, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. fair this game. Is the, this is the thing, see, is you can be arrested for this hate speech laws. Whether you get actually, you know, charged or not is another story. But if they, if you say enough things on your uh, social media for them to arrest you and interview you, even if you get no further action, that could be 12 months down the line. And in that 12 months, you can be on bail conditions not to use the internet, not to own a mobile phone, not to associate with certain people. This is what they're doing is they're taking people off the street. And that's why, like, when they when I saw that they were nicking everybody, like, I didn't really say a lot about the riots. I just reposted, uh, like, scenes of, of, you know, the Muslims running around Birmingham and all that sort of thing. I didn't make a lot of comments about it, right? And when I saw them posting that Muslim name saying it was the stabber from Southport, I, it looked fishy as hell. So I didn't yeah. bother reposting it. I thought, I'll wait and see. Because normally, a lot of times when things happen, uh, lefties will post a fake Muslim name to get everybody, you, you know, saying, oh, the guy's a Muslim. And then it turns out he wasn't one. And then you all look like twats. And the, and the lefties have done that for years, said, oh, look at these twats, you're all saying it was a Muslim and it was a white guy, do you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I was waiting. Knuckle draggers. Yeah, so I was waiting. I thought that's what was what was happening, right? But obviously I think it was a state setup, you know, because they've nicked people for, for that fake name, you know, saying well, it's... Uh, and this against Channel 3 this, News, this Channel yeah. 3 News website, which was created within hours of it happening and released yeah. that name and said yeah, it was yeah, a boat migrant... Know. Um, well, I, so, I sort of knew it was a setup, turn. like, yeah, I knew it's a setup. It's all bullshit, that is. But like, the thing is, see, is in the in the when they, I see them nicking all these people, I thought I'm going to get nicked here now. So every day, I, as I'm you know waking up, I'm hearing car doors slamming outside my flat, and I'm thinking, here we go, here we go, here we go. But it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but they've, I've been thinking I'm going to get nicked, like, and I and I haven't said anything illegal. But, like, that doesn't stop them, you know? So, so far, I haven't been arrested. And, obviously, I, I'm not 
so you know i'm not inciting any violence and i'm not saying anything racist like like i always do but that uh, you know i think they'd like to take people like us out even if they just keep you on bail for 12 months while and and you're not allowed to use the internet they've neutralized you for 12 months then haven't they 100 percent. yep it's it, it, it's it's uh it's a form of re-education right yeah well exactly it's it's like on um, Clockwork Orange, where the uh, when he was there with his eyes held open, watching the re-education films, like you know, yeah, this is where we're heading, yeah, and it's almost as if hope, not hate, uh, in number ten Downing Street. This is what it feels like. Having you know? a meeting. Yeah, with yes, yeah, sat there with with their feet under the table, and and like they are just like. When he's doing interviews, Sam, he's just going far right, far right, far right, far right, far right. He's like a robot, you know. Who was that? Sorry, Stammer. Yeah. Every yeah. interview he's given, he's going far right, far right, far right, far right. Yeah. It's like he's like a little, just like he's been some. There's a key in his back, and someone's wound him up, you know. And it's, it's far right, this far right, that. And it, as if the far right is that big that we could have people out all over the country. In those numbers, you know, they like they don't realize that people have had enough of children being murdered in this country by foreigners who should never be here, right? That's what has happened. It's nothing to do with the far right. All we're doing is is telling people what's going on. It's nothing to do with us. If people want to go rioting, that's not that's nothing that we should be getting the blame for. And the people doing the rioting are not far right. They're just normal people. I would not say according that, uh, to them, according to them, I'm we're all that, far, everyone's far right. I would far say right that, means white, you know? Genuine far right would yeah. know not to go and fucking um, well. do that, you know? You, yeah, you you just, you 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 got, um, it was an emotional time for people. Like I, I, I've said, you know, when it happened and that, I'd, I'd never had such a stress response to reading, to when the pictures got released of those three girls. Yeah, I, know, I, right? I thought I was fucking having a heart attack. So I just went like I felt rage, you know. Like, uh. well, it's, I, I've been trying to say to people, right? Like in Cardiff, there, there are a lot of people in Cardiff who moan about immigrants, right? There's a lot of lefties there, right? A lot of lefties, right? Um, there's a lot of people who don't like the the state of immigration in Cardiff, but they're terrified to say anything, right? So we don't really do a lot in Cardiff because people, they'll agree with you, but they won't help you, you know? And like the Grangetown camp in Cardiff, if we went down there, we'd get attacked with machetes, like you know? So that's why we don't do protests there. But anyway, what my point is, I've been saying to people, that kid, right, that foreigner who stabbed those girls in Southport, right, um, whether he was born in Cardiff or not, it doesn't make any difference. He's still a foreigner, right? He, if he hadn't, his family hadn't moved to Southport, those murders would have been in Cardiff. If he was still living in Cardiff and he woke up that morning and thought, I'm going to get a knife and go and kill a load of kids, that would have been Cardiff kids that were killed. And these idiots in Cardiff don't seem to understand that, you know? They're all saying we're not racist down here in Wales. We not we've had a, not had any trouble down here. No, no, because they don't think it can happen in Cardiff, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's like there's been foiled plots before where Islamists were staking out the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Um, they were talking about um, they were going to set up a takeaway in Cardiff and poison the food, right? And this was all on Google, and it's been, it's, I can't find it anymore. It was all on Google before, on the Daily Mail. I can't find it. It's been deleted, right? They Memory were talking holds. about opening a takeaway in Cardiff and poisoning a load of people with food. And you know how many people they could do there, like, you know? Because everyone's it's, having a... It's always, yeah. it's always, um, it's always uh, puzzled me how, why, you know, how easy it would be access, to access drinking water for people, reservoirs yeah. and stuff. Well, what's the security like at them places? Well, there was a, a reservoir. There's a reservoir in the Brecon Beacons, right? And this fella, this was about 12 years ago, maybe. This fella, he was like XBNP and he was, uh, he'd gone up there with his uh, kids and that. 
and he drove past a few cars full of Muslims, right? And they were in army gear and they were all getting out of cars by the reservoir, right? So he took photographs of all the number plates and everything and gave it to the police and reported it, right? And they they told him that they were um, scanning out the reservoir and they think that possibly there might have been a plot to poison it. You know, but you're never going to read that in the newspaper. And I think they got lifted, but I don't know whether they did anything to them. But he said they looked like they were like all in army gear and they were going on a hike. And he thought that's really unusual. Like, so he scouted, he drove back around and photographed all their number plates. Like, you know, it's uh, Black uh, Pigeon Pill says there, um, he, he, uh, he, po- he probably got arrested for reporting it saying, now listen, yeah, you really think they do that to us? I know, yeah. It would have been them if you thought that. <laughs> but I mean, if if that's not what they were doing, they were probably doing paramilitary training anyway. Yeah, you know? Uh, Joe, like, this Joe, is the thing. The, the, go on. The Joe, they have been training in the mountains in the south of Ireland for years with a certain Republican group. Yeah. Um, and that was reported on the BBC years ago. I'm talking 10, 15 years ago, they were training with the paramilitaries. Yeah. Uh, in the South America. So, yeah, so uh, if anybody if YouTube doesn't make it, you can look it up in actual fact. So, yeah. the BBC. So, says, someone um, put up in the chat earlier, they're coming up with all these harebrained schemes now because of the um, the overcrowding situation in the prisons. And one 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 that was posited was um, sending lags to uh, Estonia to do their sentence. Now, I mean, you've done jail time. That's well known. Yeah. Isn't part of the whole punishment and rehabil- rehabilitation thing is keeping you in contact with your family, making sure that yeah. that's a guy that you have. Now, how would that work then? Well, they've dropped the rehabilitation part of it a long time ago. Right. right? Um, they don't care about that anymore. They're just taking people miles away from their families, seemingly deliberately, you know, yeah. um, it, a big part of it. They used to do a thing called a pre-release course and they used to do a lot of uh, courses in there like, um, you know, plumbing, tiling, electricians, all that. So they, they don't seem to do any of that anymore. They just don't care. There's no rehabilitation to it now. It's just all about punishment, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't start sending people over there. But what they ought to do is send all the foreigners over there because... I was in that Wandsworth prison, right? And when I was on the first wing, the normal wing, um, I was one of the only white people there, right? It was all black gangs and Asian gangs, right? They were all fighting each other all the time. And then I got taken over onto the foreign offenders wing, which is basically all Eastern Europeans and that, like, you know, and Somalis and all that sort of thing. But... Uh, if you took all the foreigners out of that prison, right, there'd only be about a third of them left. And what would be left would be the descendants of immigrants, you know? So it, it, this is what the state we're in. Like, when they're saying that there's no pr- prison room, it's because of that. And like I I've said on streams before, every Thursday they used to deport 30 people, right? Um, they used to deport people to Eastern European countries, but only if they're wanted. If they're Polish or Latvian or uh, there was Russians in there, if they were wanted for crimes back home, they'd send them home. They do about 30 every Thursday, right? Because I was told that the prison gets paid or our government gets paid 18 and quid for everyone they send back. But they don't send them back just because they're foreign and they've committed crimes, you know. You know, mm. and there's obviously countries that um, that at the, at the moment, uh, for one reason or another, they won't send them back to either. It has to be specific countries, right? That there's deals in place with. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, gentlemen, uh, according to the government figures, the last week or the week before. They were talking about this prison issue and trying to build more prisons in this center. But apparently we are housing 11,000 foreign nationals in our prisons. Um, yeah. 
that's that was a government figure, eleven thousand four hundred nationals, and that could be what guys, Jamaica, Albania, Poland, could be anywhere. You know, <laughs> they should be fit to send them back. That would freak yeah, out some stuff. You know, if we didn't have uh, such an abundance of foreign criminals, foreign-born criminals, then we might actually have, uh, might actually be able to. I mean, there's there's jail. I think it's, is it eighty thousand roughly the prison population? Eighty thousand. Yeah. Um, when were these prisons? Majority, majority of these prisons built Victorian times. Yeah. They've got two men sharing a one-man cell. Um, that you know, it's it, we would. The prisoners, the scumbags that we'd have to punish and rehabilitate, we might have a, a, a better better chance of, you know, some people are always going to be repeat offenders. That's just in their DNA. Yeah. But, you know, if, if there was, if the services were there, the people that they could have the time with the counsellors or whatever, instead yeah. of having to hand it all, you know, it, it might actually work a bit better, a bit more efficient. Just a thought. Well, that's the thing is, what, what I was told the other day was, They've been releasing all these people so that they can lock more people up, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the rioters. And I think they said one in four is being rearrested within days, right? What they're doing is they're releasing people out who are homeless, right? They haven't got the support network to, you know, sort somewhere out for them to stay, a lot of them. So just letting them out. So they've got to turn to crime then. Yeah, so they just go and a lot of them are deliberately breaking the law just to, so they can go back in because they'd rather go back in than be homeless. Three right? square meals and three square meals. Right? Yeah, and they're saying that they're being released out as well, and they haven't got the probation officers to deal with them. So there's no network, there's no help for any of them. They're just chucked out on the streets. And if I was chucked out of prison and I had nowhere to live, I'd just get myself put back in. Because at least when you're in there, you're getting fed, you've got a TV, you, you know what I mean? It's just like you've got nothing yeah. to worry about. You've got no bills to pay or anything. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Would you rather be in there or sleeping in the bus shelter? You know? Yeah, well, there was a video came out there that were actually doing a rap from the cell. Four or five of them in a cell doing a rap. You know, doing yeah, all. yeah, yeah. Um, and I thought, I thought to myself, prison was supposed to be really tough on you, hard, you know, to break your spirit, to rehabilitate you. No, just carry on as usual, gentlemen. You know. No, there was that thing a couple of months ago where that prison prison guard was being bucked by a guy in the cell, wasn't it? And his fucking cellmate was filming it. Well, there's loads of that going on. Yeah. I'll tell you now, right? We were visiting Sven in Park Prison in Wales, right? There's like, as you're going through, you get searched by all the people that work there. You got all the people walking around the work there. The actual state of the people that work in there, right? There's like 18 year old girls walking around as guards in the prison, right? They look like, you know, it like if somebody my size was kicking off, it would take about 10 of them to even attempt to stop me. You know what I mean? And that's the thing is like, when I was in prison when I was young, all the prison officers used to be like ex-military, big, massive mm -hmm. lumps. You wouldn't have messed with any of them, like you know what I mean? Yeah. And they were tidy guys as well. These are people with attitude problems. So half the fellas in there look like students, like and and they're all you know. So if if the prisoners start kicking off, they got no chance. And 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 they said that loads of these girls are getting caught having affairs with prisoners. And it was yeah. like the prison that he went to in Wrexham, which is called Berwyn, I think. Um, Twelve girls that work in there have been caught having affairs with inmates, like like twelve of them. It's unbelievable. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know whether um, female prison guards and male, you know, and vice versa, male prison guards working in opposite sex prisons is is a particularly good thing. I don't know who, where did, I mean, is it all about equality? Is it? Yeah, it must be because the thing is, when I when I was young, I I was in Cardiff prison, right, and there was no female guards in there at all. All the fellas were massive, right? Because 
what stops somebody just dragging one of these 18 year old girls into their cell and boat and banging the door shut mm -hmm. you know it's like you know the, the the amount of prisoners who do that take hostages and all that and they got these stupid little girls walking around in there it's unbelievable honestly i'm not even joking about how small and young they are they, they they're like you know five stones soaking wet like some of them and they're there with keys and they're, and they're having an attitude with you saying wait there stay there and all this sort of thing do you know what i mean like it's unbelievable the prison's a joke, like, and that would be, even if it wasn't massively overcrowded, it would be a joke, but they're locking all these people up. And do you know, like, to, to be remanded in custody, right? You've got to do a really serious offence to be remanded in custody, or you've got to be the kind of person that does a runner while on bail, right? And, like, people never got to, when I was a football hooligan years ago, no one used to get remanded unless it was really serious, right? And they're, they're remanding people who've said stupid things on the internet now. They're remanding yep. every single one of them. And they, what they're doing is, I, I was seeing this video the other day, this guy from UKIP, he said that somebody knows was in court and his barrister had rung him up the night before and told him if he didn't plead guilty, he was going to get more and he was going to get remanded in custody. And he told him not to plead guilty. This is the guy was chatting shit on Facebook or something, right? And he, um, he, the guy, he said there was seven of them in court. Six of them pleaded guilty. All of them got remanded in custody. And the one that pleaded not guilty got bail, right? But that's very unusual for these cases because since the riots, everyone that's been arrested for either rioting or talking shit on the internet, they've all been remanded in custody, all of them. You know, the counselor's wife is remanded. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. at the end of the day, and, and they're getting two years for it. And and the same judges are allowing nonces to walk free, right? And you've got people in, uh, like, killing people as a part of a knife gang, right? And they're getting less than these people are getting for throwing a few stones at a riot, like, you know? And it's yeah. just like, if you were at a riot throwing things and setting fire to things, well, you, you're going to go to jail, in you, right? But the sentences seem really heavy. They're much heavier than they normally would be, like, you know? And if it's a Black Lives Matter riot, well, look what happened to them. Oh, if they even me. got charged, they got a conditional discharge. Yeah. The, the guy that climbed up on the Senate half and burnt the flags only got a conditional discharge. Absolutely. Okay. And that should have been a hate crime. I mean, I don't agree with hate crimes, but if there's going to be hate crimes, they should work both ways, you know? Joe, the guy that threw the cup of cement at uh, Barrage, he got, what was it he got? Yeah, he, got a, he, had, to pay, he had to pay for Farage's suit to be cleaned or something, didn't he? Yeah. And, uh, Is that right, or was that the other guy? He, he didn't go to jail anyway. I don't think he got a suspended. He got, maybe he got community service or something. Right, he, no. he got a suspended sentence, and the girl yeah. that threw the milkshake around him, she had to pay for a suit to be cleaned. Yeah, uh, so that was what it. message does that send then? It, it sends the message that if you don't like someone's politics and they're on the right, you can attack them. But the other fella, wasn't it somebody insulted Ed Miliband and got 12 months mm -hmm. because he said yeah. it was an attack on democracy? Yes, I'm sure I saw that the other day. Like somebody had done something to Ed Miliband, and yes. he'd got 12 months for it. I don't know whether he tried to attack him or something, or if he just abused him, and he got 12 months. And the guy that deliberately threw shit, and people were saying he was throwing paper cups. A cup, paper cup, won't fly through the air like that, you know. So oh, hey. it, he'd scooped something up into the cups and thrown it. Right, it was con concrete or cement or something. It's good yeah, to cement. They said, didn't they? But like, if it's not all right to attack MPs, then it's not all right to attack any MP, is it? You know. But so they're sending, and there they are, shitting themselves about people saying there's a two tier system here going on, and they're like, oh my god, don't say that, don't say that, you know. And it's just like they they're talking about shutting the internet down because people are talking about a two-tier system and every day we're seeing more and more examples of it like 
yes. well, it's it, it's become so in your face blatant now, isn't it? And it's great to be able to juxtapose, like when you look at the same judge who sent Sam away, um, and you see previous cases that he's uh, you know resided over, and it's you know it's suspended sentences for people having like four hundred of the worst category images you can have of children, yeah. like, you know. But it's not just people downloading images, it's people who are actually abusing kids and they're not going to jail as well. Yes. Uh, you're not going to jail for that, but you're going to jail for some stickers or you're going to, you know, and Sam didn't even have any stickers. He just designed them and put them on a page. He didn't even have any stickers. Because yeah. some people have said he was selling stickers and he wasn't, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. it was... Uh... What was it, gentlemen? I was about to say there. The fellow that came here on a dinghy, and I can't say the word, it starts with R, but he assaulted a young lady uh, because he couldn't speak English. He got a suspended yeah. sentence, and uh, what was it? Yeah. What was a group of seventy-three pound fine? Oh, something yeah, yeah ridiculous. The the, you, you, the the Somali girls who who beat up uh, the the, uh, the uh, English bird, calling her a white slag and everything, and then. The judge said, "Oh, they're not used to alcohol." So that's, that's right. But like, people looked through their Facebook, and they were always on the piss. You know, yeah. that's the thing. Like, and and you imagine what would have happened if that was the other way around. I've done I've done a video about that. Right. Um, it's, her name was Rhea Page. That was why the EDL did a demo in Leicester back in the day. Like, you know, and uh, there was carnage there. But the thing is, is the, the EDL was saying. So that you know, we you know, like that. If you think a sentence was unduly lenient, you can apply to the attorney general for it to be taken back to court. And we did that, and they just basically told us to get lost, right? So, uh, that was why the EDL went to uh, Leicester that time, and there was carnage there that day because hundreds and hundreds of Muslims came out with bats and stuff. And it was kicking off everywhere, but obviously it was all the EDL's fault. And um, it cost Leicestershire Council and police about half a million quid. Um, yeah. Like, that was because they wouldn't take that case back to court and resentence it. Which, yeah. like, because if it was a gang of white girls that attacked a Somali girl, they would have probably got five years. You know? If it was the same sort of thing with the racial abuse and all that as well, like. And yeah, that's, so this and that's thing has been going on for years. Yeah. Yeah, it's mad. Anyway, let's um talk about what's been going on um around the country with the housing situation that we were talking um before we came online there. Talking about yeah. the situation where uh we found out in the week the government have five thousand beds every night paid for on retainer that no one sleeps in. Um yeah. that well that we're paying for, so the government pays for we're paying for. Um did you want to expand a little bit more on that, Joe? You were, you were talking to me about it. Yeah, right. Well, we know people that work in hotels, right? And um, this is basically what's happening, right? Is the home office or their agents are approaching hotels and saying, can we have 100 rooms, right? So they say, okay. Now, the people in the hotels... If their room rate is normally like £67 a night, because it's the home office, they're telling the home office it's 113 a night because they know the home office will pay it, right? Yeah, they're they price gouging the taxpayer. Yeah, so, but like, you know, if you owned a hotel and the home office rang you and you knew they'd pay double what the, the going rate is, you'd just do it, wouldn't you? Because, you know what I mean? Because that's human nature, that is. So well, the, you telling... say that, there's been a few outliers that have said, I'm not taking the money. So I, 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 I'm just saying, I'm not saying I would do it, but I don't yeah. own a hotel, right? But most people will do anything for money. That's the that's the bottom line, right? Yeah, so right. anyway, these hotel owners, and some of them are chains as well. As they're not just one person owning a hotel, they're chains, right? But they're being told, Oh, they're like going to their boss. Um, uh, the home office won 100 rooms. What's the room rate? I'll tell them 113, right? So that's like double what they would normally charge, right? So the home office now have got 100 rooms in the hotel, right? So they put a, they fill those 100 rooms. Now, as they're taking people from there and housing them or putting them into the temporary villages or wherever they're putting them, right? At some stages, only 50, 60 rooms are in use, right? 
but all that time they're still paying for 100 rooms because they need those rooms to be available at a drop of a hat right so they don't let the hotel have the rooms back to rent out to the public, right? Not that the public would want to stay in there with a load of foreign men running around the place anyway, with, right? But with posters on the wall that says, get permission before touching someone else's child. Yeah, exactly. And and please don't shit in the hallway, you know? Yeah. And like this is the thing, right? And and so they're paying for a hundred rooms while only 50 or 60 are occupied, right? And then it was uh, announced the other day that they've got 5,000 rooms on standby. So potentially they're paying for 5,000 rooms at over a hundred pound a room that nobody is staying in. Joe, you know? did, you see, did you see the inquest, the parliament, parliamentary inquest into the rooms and them asking the question about the rooms and, who was, and how they were requesting the rooms and where were the rooms and the man's going oh they're all across britain we have so many here and so many there and so he says well, what if they're you know they're, there's not people there's no people in these rooms they're that's um, just doing a bit on, a, on the back of a fag packet mass here that's six hundred and fifty thousand pound a week on yes sleeping beds so times that by 52 and you've got your year yeah. yeah, well, well they, they reckon it's like eight million a day, don't they? Like, you know, yes, in total. I mean, uh, how much, like, let's not forget, right? Is that, that just hotel rooms? Yeah, well, let's mm -hmm. not forget this either, right? When they get granted asylum or residency or whatever it is, and they get put into houses, and we know that in Wales, they're putting them into Airbnbs, they're putting them into any rented property they can get their hands on, right? If they've been granted residency, they're no longer being paid for by the Home Office. So they're now being paid for. If they're getting housing benefit, they're getting it from the local authority. Right? So how many of them are getting their rent paid and their council tax paid by local councils? Who Those local councils who charge us council tax and tell us they've got no money for anything. Yeah. And closing uh, everything down because they've got no money. Well, right. I'm, well, I'm well, while we're driving on roads that are like the fucking the roads that the uh, Jeremy Clarkson was driving on in Madagascar. Yeah, um, yeah, know, yeah. Man. <laughs> living it up with a um, with a free Wi-Fi pass. Yeah, yeah, but um, there was a uh, one of the MGB news presenters, a young skinny looking guy with the dark hair, and he rolled out the same numbers as Jack. Just Kevin to, Sullivan. Like, what do you call him? Kevin Sullivan. Glasses. No, no Wasn't glasses. Talking to Isabel Oak shot about it, no? No, it's a young, a youngish fella, fresh faced uh, father. Um, he's always talking about his kids. And he had uh, grilled them about uh, somebody about the, the rooms. And he says, So when you pass them down to local councils, then it becomes a council's problem. Then nobody knows who these people are or where they are. You know, and that was the main uh, reason behind it. If you pass them down to local councils, they can disappear. Um, they don't. What they'll do is they'll set them in your town, my town, and everywhere else, because we're starting to see it here. Remember old Angela Rayner there with the teeth? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Turn around saying, oh, we're going to disperse them all across Great Britain. 90% of these people are getting leave to stay or asylum. You know? Um, it's like I was hearing about like Eritreans. Uh, this, this seems to be a big boost in Eritreans at the moment because for some reason it's like a ninety-nine percent acceptance rate on their asylum claims. They just, they just. Do you know the acceptance rate? They can get a, onto the soil. They, they're here for life. Do you know what the acceptance rate is in Germany? Hundred and point seven percent of what Eritreans? Of all, basically. You go, you can go down through the list, and it's less than one percent for all the different ethnic so, groups. So, so the so the, the the migrant population there are all there, like have overstayed their whatever. Yeah. Now, um, Sweden and Germany. Sweden came out uh, last week and said that they had Afghans uh, refugees staying with them. The Afghan refugees had got a a bit of paper. 
and they were flying home. Now, Afghan is a war zone, apparently, and it's very, very dangerous, and you shouldn't go there, people. I must reiterate that. They're flying home for family visits. So what the, the Swedish did then was say, if you fly into the country, don't come back. Some Someone was, I can't remember where I saw it, but someone was saying they had a, an Afghan Uber driver and they were chatting to him and they, and they were saying, oh, he go, he, he's been there, been in, been in the UK for like 30 years. He goes, oh, I'd go back now because the Taliban have made it safe. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, but um, Germany now are deporting hundreds by the week, um, getting rid of them, um, because they are, and especially a certain demographic from a certain faith, they're getting rid of, because, you know, after, was it 2015, gentlemen, Angela Merkel opened the door to one million of them. Five. Five million. Five million. Five million. <laughs> Five million of them. Uh, it turns out that they weren't all doctors and engineers and, you know, uh, scientists and professors. So, who knew? Joe. Right. Well, I'll tell you this now, right? And it's like, I've seen some Sivnati types saying, oh, we can check out this hotel. We were told it was full of migrants, but actually it's full of Ukrainians, right? And that's mm -hmm. okay. That's what they say, right? But I'll tell you this now, mm -hmm. right? Loads of the Ukrainians are coming over here to take the piss out of us, right? Mm -hmm. And I was told by a girl who works in a hotel that her hotel was full of Ukrainians. They were being sanctioned by the benefits agency because they were missing appointments and they were missing appointments because they've gone home. Right. And they're going home for six weeks at a time. Their hotel room is empty. And then they come back for a few weeks and then they, they're going back and forth. And they the whole time they're claiming UK benefits and the UK benefits are not means tested for them. Right. So they could be really well off from where they come from and they are being paid full benefits, right? And if they yeah. say that they've got PTSD or they've seen atrocities and all that, which no one can prove one way or another, they're getting PIP, right? They're getting, uh, you know, the mental health element of benefits, right? Yes. They're taking the absolute piss out of us, right? And I'm not saying it's all the Ukrainians, right? But I'm telling you now that they are, a lot of them are coming here as tourists and they're taking the piss out of our benefits. And I saw somebody, um, is it David Atherton on Twitter the other day? And he posted something up from someone that works in a benefits agency. And he said, you would not believe the amount of people who are getting away with it they are not in this country. They are mostly back where they've come from and they're still getting UK benefits. And the benefits agency is scared to sanction them because they don't want to be called racism. You know, like the they don't want to be called racist. Grooming gangs, yeah. Well, it's just like, well, if, if you're an African and you're claiming benefits, but you're back and forth to your own country and then they try to sanction you and you say, what, what it's because I'm black, is it? I'll go to the newspaper then. They go, no, 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 don't go to the newspaper. You know, so like absolutely thousands of foreigners are taking the piss out of us. Uh, and, you know, th this is one's this is a different thing altogether. And then you've got the Afghans. They're saying these ones that are in RAF St. Athens down here, there's hundreds of them. Right. And they're saying people are saying to us, well, they're not refugees. They're um, they've come here under a different scheme. It's a different scheme because they they help the British Army. Um, you know, we've had twats from 77 Brigade sending us messages saying, how dare you insult the Afghans like um, they helped the British Army. We couldn't have done it without them. Well, you couldn't have done what? What did you do over there? Wasn't there did more you... interpreters, interpreters than actual servicemen? Yeah, well, exactly, right? <laughs> There's and... 20,000 20, interpreters, but only 5,000 yeah. British troops were ever in well, ever, uh, Afghanistan. And when it's... the translators came here, they couldn't speak a word of English. It's a racket. It's another one, see, is where we've got in Clantwit Major, where we did that demo and where they're just about to put f nearly 500 of them in the camp there. 
but they're going to be boat people now. They've been told it's going to be Eritreans and Somalians and all that, where they were told it was going to be Ukrainian families. And that was why people were being funny with us saying that we were bastards because we didn't want Ukrainian families here. And then you got just like a couple of miles down the road in St. Athens, people saying, well, you're, there's something wrong with you. These helped us in the war. They helped our people. You know what I mean? It's just like, you're all being told lies and you're being conned and you're that fucking retarded that you can't see it, right? It's always a different lie. Like, there is no possible way that this many Afghans helped us during that war, right? There is no way. Every soldier would have had, like, 20 interpreters working around with him, you know? It's, 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 it's a joke, like. And, and like, do you know when we were down there the other week doing a demonstration, right? Um, like five or six Afghan families drove past us in brand new cars, right? And like they they're clearly Afghans from the camp, right? Now we're we're doing our demos on the main road outside the village. We don't go to the camp because we don't want to be accused of wanting to cause trouble. And there's some gangs of them strolling around. We don't want to get into a scrap with them, like you know what I mean? Because we. It'll be, you know, we'll just get nicked, like, right? So that's not why we're there. We're just peacefully protesting. But loads of people supporting us. and But the people are pulling over and saying, everyone agrees with you, but everyone's just too scared to say anything, like, you know? They have got the British people cowering, especially now since yeah. they've started nicking people for comments on the internet. Yeah, proper, you know? proper cucked. Yeah, exactly. But you, you, you. There was a thing came out there, it was, it was last week, and uh, it was GB News reported on it, and say certain religious demographic gets asylum here. He can claim £109 a week for his wife. Well, if he has three Which more... Uh, what? No. If he has, uh, say he has three more wives back in his homeland, he can claim £109 for each of them. Even though they're not in Britain, yeah. So, um, who? Uh, was, uh, well, CB News reported that it was a uh, young boy got married there recently, Patrick Christie, and he he was sitting there with his mouth open. He was flabbergasted. <laughs> like that's British taxpayers' money going to a foreign country. Say, hundred and nine. That's what it is. Hundred and ten. So, three hundred and thirty quid is going to wherever this guy came from. To be the cave number four. <laughs> cave number four. Yeah, but it's you know, it, it's it's unbelievable that people can like if you ever sign on for benefits in this country, you get hardly anything, right? No, and I had to get, go over COVID, mate. Yeah, you get a load of asshole off them as well. I right? was it was it was harder than going to bloody work. Yeah. At one point they told me. I had to provide evidence that for 40 hours a week, I was looking for work. Yeah, I know. To get 320 quid a month, I think. Yeah. You know. It's not even <clears throat> enough to, that's not even enough to pay your bills, like, right? <laughs> and, the, and the thing is, is these people are claiming benefits and they're claiming the top rate because they're on the PIP and their mental health elements as well. And they're not even in the country and they're missing appointments as well. You know, yeah. you miss one appointment. If you 10 minutes late for an appointment, you get talking sanctioned. Of, talking of inter uh, interpreters then, right? So the amount of people who come here now, they have no reason to learn the language because they're not going to be put into an area where they're the only family. Like it, when, when I was a kid and people had to assimilate to survive, they're just going to get put into an area where all their people are all already. So they're never going to have to learn. So all these appointments that they do have with English speaking doctors and whatever, whatever you can have an appointment for, there's another, there's hot there. I believe there's phone lines. They ring up and connect them and these yeah. paid interpreters. Oh yeah. I'll say, I know about that. It's called Literally. language line, right? Yeah. And it's it, each call costs 90 quid, right? Yes. Because when people ring up British gas, right? If they can't speak English, you can ask for an interpreter and then they put you on hold. They get the interpreter 
and then you have a three-way conversation between you, the customer who can't speak English, and the interpreter, right? And that costs British Gas £90 per call, right? Oh. So if one of them is phoning up to dispute his bill and it's going to cost them 90 quid for a call, they might as well just waive the bill. If he's if he's arguing about the amount of the bill, you know, it's just like yeah. it's cheap for them to just let the guy just say, okay, we'll take that charge off rather than pay for the interpreters. And I've had um, a solicitor tell me that there's untold cases going on in courts, um, <laughs> custody battles between uh, foreign families, right, over child custody, and of uh, a legal aid bill that's, that's 31 there. grand, 18,000 of that bill is for interpreters, right? Um, this is... But- if you if if we were to put all these things together, right, um, it's costing this country absolutely billions, right? And the fact of the matter is, they've just taken the winter fuel allowance off our pensioners, haven't they? Yeah, you know, and and so our pensioners can die, freeze to death, and scared to you know, can't afford to go and buy food or anything, right? Yet these people are living in like four and five star luxury and they're getting everything given to them. So and are the all their meals being cooked for them? Yeah. Well, in the one hotel, they don't um they don't have like a kitchen there, right? Uh they they um they oh, I think only, you told me about this. Yeah, take away. They, they brought in caterers, uh which were of a certain faith, uh, cooked certain foods, three meals a day, and they were laying on like baguettes and all this sort of thing so that they could just come in and take whatever they wanted anytime they wanted. And um, they said they've never seen people take so many sandwiches and baguettes in their life. Like they possibly couldn't possibly have ate them all. They were just taking them for the sake of it. And then they end up throwing them out the window to the birds. Mm-hmm. You yep. know, they just because they're there and they're free, they're just taking them. You know, and it, yeah. it's just unbelievable. Joe, there was a thing there where the likes of Tesco's and Asda and stuff they would put out a couple of big things during the week. It was somebody filmed it in England, and it was tins of stuff and veg and fruit and all these different things. And all these people with, uh, if you don't look British, and uh, their faces are all covered and they're all wearing, they look like a letterbox. They stormed the supermarket and there was nothing left. And this guy followed them back to the streets that they were living in. And after a couple of days, all of the veg and the fruit and all was lying in the back alley of the house, rotten away. Um, over here, it's slightly different. The church, they'll take donations from server markets and stuff, and they'll make up wee food parcels, and they'll take them around to the local elder to yeah. people um, and things like that there. And if they can't cook a meal, what they do is they use the British Legion kitchens, and a load of the ladies from the church will go in, and they'll cook up meat, potatoes, and vegetables, and the church goers then will drive around and deliver them to the vulnerable people. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't find that in England. I don't think you'd find it in Wales either. Or Scotland. No, no. no. You know, um, talking about like um, you know, we live in quite a low trust society now. Um, and what I see over in, in, in over here in Ulster, and Rags have testified to this, like you only have to drive a couple of minutes out of your big towns. And even in some of the big towns, a lot of people keep their own chickens, bees. Uh, their fresh produce that they sell people and it's all honesty it's all honesty box yeah you're never ever gonna be able to it, it, you know in 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 a, in a in a certain time frame none of that's gonna be able to happen you're not gonna be able to leave you know a couple of dozen boxes of eggs out and uh just to, and know that people are gonna put the money in for them because they're just gonna be taken no no that's right yeah well you couldn't do that in Cardiff but like there are places around the Vale of Glamorgan, which is like the the county around Cardiff, where you can uh, you can find eggs and that, and you can take the eggs and you can leave the money and that, right? Yep. But in the actual city, no way. Right. Not I've, I've seen it. be gone, you know. 
and I'll tell you how, like, I've, this, this is a, this is American centric, what I'm about to say. And, and, um, bootnecks in the chat there. So you might be able to testify to this. It's, um, when, when you get like a black person who, who, who knows what's going on, right. And he'll go to a, to a white, a white place and he cannot believe that you can just go and take stuff and leave the money. They can't get over it. That concept. Yeah. You know? Because he said, he goes, if this was an end town, you just, be, it would just be bare shelves. There'd be nothing left. Yeah, I know. Have you seen, well, um, yeah. you've, well, hang on. You've seen it on Halloween, right? The ring, the ring doorbell cameras don't lie, do they? When you get like um, a white family go up and the, the, the box and they take their own stuff and then you see the other one, they take everything. They leave nothing for anyone else. Oh yeah, on like the Halloween and that, like yeah. as well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know why you'd want to do that. Like you know, it's just unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. But that's what yeah. I said about the, the the sandwiches and the baguettes and that. Just, they're just because they're there, they're taking handfuls of them. Yeah. And then they're not it's eating there. them, like you know, because it's there. Yeah. Yeah, just because it's there and it's free, like. So Did unbelievable. You... Did you want to mention RAF Scampton at all? Because there's a, a small, like I said to you, a very small white pill and an ocean of black pills there. But you think there's a bit more to it than that. Like you're not, it's not really a victory as such because it's just a case of they're, they're, they've been put elsewhere and ultimately they will have be put into home, houses. Yeah, right. Well, the thing is, I went up to Scampton. Um, it's a massive mission for us to get there from here. But like... I always, Lincoln, like right? to, I always like to go to these places so I can say I've been there, right? Is it Lincoln, but, Joe? Yeah, it's Lincolnshire. Yeah, it's, it's quite like a trip near, to you guys, isn't it? It's near enough, like, by Skegness, like, you know? Right. I think it took us about six hours to get there. Um, If you put it into the sat-nav, it's about four and a half hours, but obviously you get stuck in the traffic and that is, it's a mission to get to, right? And I went yeah. up there. There was only a few people there. There was massive amounts of infighting up there. Uh, there was all different people arguing and, uh, and scrapping. There was it, was it was carnage, right? Um, it's a really dangerous. Like the camp was outside the main gate. There was all these lorries hurtling past. It's one of the most dangerous roads in Lincolnshire as well, you know. And it was freezing cold as well. So fair play to all the people who stayed there. But they had to. There's like six, I think, six different gates. Like the place is massive, right? Yep. And it, it's like the you know the dog's name, right? The dog uh that was uh Gibson's dog and he's buried there. Yeah, that one word that seems to um yeah. trigger certain people to the word that black people can say and do yeah, say yeah. and call each that's other, it. yeah, but that no one else yeah. can, right? That was the dog's name, and anyway, they were gonna dig the grave up. I know. Right? Anyway, so well, now, now we've got a Labour government. They've said they're not using it, and it's like as if, yeah, everyone's saying, yeah, it's a victory. But it is uh, it is a victory because I didn't want to see that, you know, uh, epic place be destroyed, right? And I definitely didn't want them digging up the dog as well. Like, it's just sacrilegious, that is. But anyway, it's only because this government has decided they're going to house them all. And it could be because they've stopped. We went down to the Bibby Stockholm as well in Portland, and um, we did a PA protest down there. What, like you know, what's happening with that? We can come back to that. But what's happening with that? Is it just just a white elephant floating in Portland Harbour? Yeah. Now? Well, I, no I don't one even, Yeah, they've taken them all off there. All they did was moan about it, right? The thing did is, someone commit is, suicide on it, or did someone threaten yeah. to commit suicide? No, he did kill himself. I think. Right. Right. But uh, you know, the thing is. Because he killed himself, all the lefties jumped on it and said he probably had mental health problems anyway, right? They all jumped on it saying... A lot, saying, of, that, a lot of that going around, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He, he'd killed himself because of the conditions and all that. What it is, right, is this. Someone that works in one of the hotels told us that their hotel was just a basic hotel, right? Um, there's no gym in there, there's no sauna in there, there's no swimming pool in there, like there is in a lot of them, right? They had uh so-called refugees in there, and they were being given free taxis there and back to the nearest town, which is 15 quid each way, right? So every day, because there's nothing there, it was a rural hotel. 
they were allowed to have 30 quid worth of taxis paid for, paid for every day to go to town and back, right? And they were all in the taxis slating the staff in the hotel to the taxi drivers. And obviously the taxi drivers know the staff, so they were telling them what was being said. And they were saying the staff in the hotel were just rude, they were twats, and they were saying that they don't like this hotel because there's no facilities, there's no gym, there's no swimming pool, there's no sauna. So they were kicking off complaining. They got moved to other Cardiff hotels where they did have swimming pools and saunas and all the rest of it and gyms, you know? So they're not like, if they were running away from a war, they'd be grateful for a hotel room, wouldn't they? You know, but no, no, they want the facilities. They want to. They want all the stuff they've seen their mates showing off about on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. You know? TikTok. Come over here. The girls are easy. Gym, three yeah. meals a day. Yeah, you've got to worry yeah. about where your next meal's coming from. You're not going to be cold at night, and no. the girls are easy. You get up in the morning, go for a swim, go down the, and sit in the sauna, and all that sort of thing. They, they, they're holiday makers. It's all inclusive. And the whole, and the whole like alcohol being haram. Um, I haven't, I mean, obviously the, the very zealot ones will be, but you're just your average yeah. uh, Muslim guy uh, is is sat around, I know it's the Africans as well, but they just sit around town centres drinking all day. Uh, they, they literally walk into Littles without a, a word of English with a wee plastic card and they all, the plastic card looks all the same and it's all from the same place, the British government. Um, yeah, it's an Aspen card, isn't it? <laughs> Aspen. Two, two, yeah. bottles, two bottles, liter bottles of vodka, and a two liter bottle of cup. And he doesn't yeah, well, speak a word. He just, <laughs> go ahead. I sent you some photos from the Penali when we did the uh, protests down in Penali. And they were all in, that was an old army camp, and they, they got taken out of there. And the main reason was because they were grooming young girls down there, you know? But that was the first thing they did when they got down there, right? Was uh, they, they went to the off-license, oh. bought booze, went to the local parks and started chatting up little girls, you know? So this, they, they don't drink alcohol. Well, they do, unless they're just buying it to try and get the girls drunk, like, you know? Well, we know that, that, that's a pattern of behaviour from Rochdale, Rotherham, Telford. Exactly. Yeah. Add another myriad number of English towns. Yeah. yeah. But like, if we talk about it, well, we're we're just trying to spread hate, then, aren't we? You know, because because it's hateful to not want little girls to be raped. Like, hateful. But while you're talking, do you mind putting up the photographs on the screen? So yeah, this is not us okay. here. This is um, people doing protests outside Balmarsh and Thamesmead uh, prisons last week, I think it was, because of all the people being jailed, like, you know, and all the people being remanded and all the people being locked up for just for saying stupid things on the internet, you know? I can't, I remember, which, yeah. I can't remember which commentator said it, but he said, he said the irony that they're releasing violent, thuggish, murdering offenders early, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, black, right? Um, to make way for uh, indigenous white Britons who are angry about black people murdering. Yeah, you know that's. Well, were, like, one of the right guys. One of the guys that's being let out was part of a gang who murdered a white kid, wasn't it? Fourteen-year-old in Newcastle with a machete. Yeah. Uh, I think less than six months prison time. Yeah. So they want to let out the people who are killing people. To put in the people who are angry about people being killed. There you That's go. That's the logic. It. That's anarcho tyranny, where yeah. they want you so scared, worry, and fear that you call for more state. I need you, state. I need more of you. Yeah, exactly. Gotham City. These are all photos from different demos that we've done, like you know. But um, we're doing them all the time. We we do like we stand on the side of the road. Or we go on the motorway bridges, and this is like th this was happening when the lockdown was on this Penali camp one. Um, but we did get rid of them down there, like, but it's, it's a victory. But you know, they haven't been sent home, they've been housed, they've been moved, you know? yeah. they've moved been off. taken out of there, put into a hotel, or they've been put into housing. Mm -hmm. 
you know um the people who do the um sort of who who carry water for these people did you did you read the story this week about the afghan guy and there was a uh, two newspaper clipping side by side and the first one was like oh cricket and he, he becoming a fine upstanding you know with his love of cricket he's becoming a fine upstanding citizen of york and then yeah. literally it's the next it's the same picture but it's been cropped and he, yeah turned out yeah, to this, this whole year this is them the migrants that were in the camp and they were demanding housing they were saying um a house not a hotel and all this sort of thing. yeah i remember this mm-hmm. i remember this, yeah. um, these scenes from i remember watching them in my uh, uh, in the in the flat i was in during lockdown yeah. yeah yeah there was hundreds of them in there like you know and like we know they haven't been sent home there it is there like a house not a hotel and who yeah. wrote these signs for these people I think the lefties probably did because the lefties they, were going there. Sure, it did, did not write them themselves. Oh, lefties were rocking up there and giving them footballs and uh, you know, like Man United football. I thought you were going to say foot massages then, and now that, that wouldn't have surprised me either. Oh. <laughs> well, the, funny enough, the one one bird, right? She was going there all the time. This right weird looking thing, right? She was going there all the time in her little van giving them food, making them curries and all that, driving them into town. And she got into a relationship with one of them. And I was, someone was sending photos and videos around of her on uh, WhatsApp the other week. And she, they've, she's doing porn videos with them now. I'm not wow. even joking, like, right? This lefty is doing porn videos with migrants. Like, it's unbelievable. You know, and, um, and she started out by driving them into town and everything, like you know, it's just disgusting. I would love to speak to um, uh, someone who's currently serving in the services where they're in these 100 year old plus military camps and, and find out the conditions that they're expected to live and work in actual service, actual serving members of the military. Well, that's what happened well, in Canali. Um, they, they said that the camp wasn't fit for human habitation. Did they burn and... some of Penali or try to? Yeah, one of them set fire to his room. Another one stabbed another one in the rooms, right? They were yeah, saying... All the boxes there. They... Listen to this, right? They were saying the rooms, the place is not fit for human habitation, right? And they were doing videos in the kitchens and everything, which was their kitchens, right? What they had to prep food in or, you know... Food was being delivered and they had to cook it in there. All the bins were overflowing with shit, you know, like, uh, and the kitchens were a state. And they were they were filming the kitchen being in such a state as if it was our fault, like. It's like, you're the people living there. You're the people cooking food in there. You're the ones who've made the mess, right? And and you're you're doing a video of it as if it's a reason for you to be moved because you live like that. Do you know what I mean? They were saying it was a it was a dive and I, and it, there was bin bags all overflowing in the kitchen. Well, take them out then, in it. You know what I mean? Just just leave them there overflowing, empty them. But like they obviously they would expect someone else to do that for them. Like, but when they moved them out of there because it was unfit for human habitation, they put the army back in. <laughs> it's a working army base again now. What Penali is? Yeah, so it wasn't good enough for them. And now it's back, the army are back in there. It's good enough for our soldiers. They're not good enough for these people. Who, you know, yeah, if you a, run away from a war a, zone, you'd be happy if you had a tent, wouldn't you? Right? There was, a report, there was, a, there yeah. was a report on it, Joe, um, whereby you can actually see daylight between the walls and the roof. Um, and that's where they're housing soldiers. And there was literally vermin crawling yeah. around their feet. Rats and mice. You know, it is it is a dive that camp, like you know. But I mean, they should be grateful for it. If they were genuine, they'd be grateful, wouldn't they? It's absolute piss take. No, that's that. I've not assured you. You had sent me something else here, Joe. I was going to step up in a second to see if I could find it. Oh yes, this one. Now explain this one. I think this was a couple of years back. And you had it. Um. This is a video I did a while ago about uh, 
I was at the Copthorne Hotel in Culverhouse Crossing, Cardiff. Two coaches full of Afghans rocked up. It was mostly families. They've all got luggage. Uh, they, there's no way these people have come on boats. They were all flown over here. And there was loads of them just piling in there. They'd been staying in the Copthorne for a long time. That's a posh wedding hotel. It's got a sauna, um, swimming pool, gym, everything. Right, these lot here have probably been housed by right now. And we got a whole new big massive load of them at St. Athen. A load more of them down at Grangetown in Cardiff in the camp. And we've got, uh, we're expecting, although that won't be Afghans, in uh, Clantwick Major there'll be hundreds and hundreds of uh, the boat people, the men that come on the boats, like, you know. So, yeah, just putting this back on for you. It's a trip down memory lane. It's time for people to take a stand now and tell our elected representatives that we don't want any more. There's no housing in Wales as it is. We just can't afford to keep letting them come. A good video, that one, Joe. Yeah, well, that was like about two years ago. We're like, we were keeping an eye on the place, and I was just passing, and I thought, oh, I'll have a little look. Like, and I, as I pulled in, two coaches just pulled in, man. It was unbelievable, like the timing of it. Like, yeah, you, know? not, you, you don't bring fucking roll on luggage on a boat. Yeah. No, of course you don't, you know. But like, the thing is, see, is this this is what people don't seem to understand, right? If there's 200 in that hotel. It's not just 200 because no. they'll take 20 out and house then up another 20 in. It's a conveyor belt. Rotating door, it's yeah. Not, yeah, it's not just 200. It, you know, they'll just, if they find housing for 50 of them, take them out, another 50 go in. It's, it's, it's just, you know, like we've got no housing. It's like I worked it out before. I think it was something like 93,000 people on the waiting list in, in Wales, right, for housing. Just in um, Wales. Loads of people living at their parents' houses with babies. And, you know, they've had a baby and they're still living at home with their parents and that, right? Um, like, I've been told that lately uh, the councils are chucking people off the housing lists. They're basically saying to people, you've got no chance of ever being housed by us. Right. We've had people stopping their cars when we're doing process and telling us, even though they've got children, they're being told like that three to five years to be housed. Now, the the, the local MP in um, St. Athen is called Alan Keynes. And he says to the local people, oh, don't worry about it. You know, they're not going to be in the camp for long. They're going to be housed in three to six weeks. So they're going to be housed in three to six weeks, but people have got to wait three to five years. It's funny how fast tracking anything works against us. So yeah. they fast track the justice system when it involves us, and they fast track the housing when it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it, everywhere, it kind of everywhere, happens. everywhere, there's a spare plot of land around the Cardiff area. Now you can see houses going up, flats going up. You know. Like Porth Call, they're saying the fairground's going to be going and 900 flats are going to be put in. That's a seaside resort. Who's going to get those 900 flats, right? It's just there's housing going up everywhere, but we know for a fact it's not going up for our people. Yeah, but you know? it's what everyone's saying around here as well, Joe. Any 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 sort of development going on, people yeah. are waking up to it. They go, well, it won't be for us. Exactly. Well, the thing is, is this is what we've been told down here, right? Any new estate that's being built, 50% has to go for social housing, right? So potentially 50% of them could go to these people, right? They're going to be a priority because they're living in temporary accommodation, right? And yet we've got what they, it's like in Wales, they're called clear spring, right? But it's, it's the equivalent of Circo for England, right? They are buying up houses like it's going out of fashion, Right. If you've got a house on sale in Wales, you're being contacted by Clear Springs to sell it to them. They're saying it'll be a quick sale. You know, they'll skip, you know, like normally when you're selling a house, it takes ages. It goes through all sorts of legal loopholes. Uh, they'll speed it through. They'll give you a good price for it because they know they're going to get guaranteed rent from the home office. 
And they're the same people who were approaching. If you're a, a landlord in Wales, you've got to register. You've got to be on this register. All of them are being contacted. They're going to give you more rent for, for taking migrants than you get from a family, right? And it's when the people move out, you get a guaranteed that full re redecoration. You get a much better deal. And that's what I was saying earlier is we've had people contacting us that they're being told that they've got notice to leave. And it's because the, the landlords would rather have migrants in there. You yep. know, because they're going to get a better deal. It's unbelievable. Eric Eden come with, with, with price gouging the taxpayer. Yeah, right. But the thing is, is like, it's hard to get flats and houses in Wales now, right? What's it going to be like for our children, our grandchildren, when they want us, when they need a house? No, They're going to have no chance, right? It's, you know, this is why it, it, it frustrates me when we've got so many people supporting us. We have, when we do, you know, like when we're doing these demos down the air, we got like, sometimes there's only four of us. Sometimes there's like, you know, 10. The, I think the most we've had lately is about 18 people, right? And yet we got all these people pulling over and saying, oh, nice one, nice one. This is epic and all that, right? And like everyone you meet is, is fuming about this, fuming about the housing situation, but they're all scared to do anything. Yeah, you know, I was saying about on you know on my stream that I done like the other night. I I was on about the people in Lanswick Major. They're having meetings in the pub. They're terrified of being called racist. They wouldn't stand with us when we did our demo, right? They allowed us to get attacked by a load of lefties. They there was two hundred of them on a page against it. Didn't have the bottle to join us, right? Now they're all grizzling because the units that have been put in are overlooking all their gardens, right? Um, they, they've been they've had letters lately now saying it won't be Ukrainian families; it's going to be mostly men from Africa. They're having meetings about it in the pub, and this fella told me the other night. He said that he went to a meeting in the pub, and he said to them, "You know, you're all sat here grizzling now." He said the time to do something about this was before they built it, right? He said, we should have done something before they built it. They chucked him out and banned him from the pub. <laughs> because he had the cheek to tell them that. You know? <laughs> and and they're saying the, old, old Bill to go around and adjust his way of thinking. Yeah, he obviously needs you know diversity training. Yeah. But like the the um basically they're complaining that the the house prices are gonna go down by 60, 70 grand in that area now. They called a demo a few months ago and we started advertising it and they realized that we were advertising it. They shit themselves and canceled the demo. Unbelievable. Uh, they're just so terrified. They would rather lose 70 grand on the house prices and be too scared to let their children walk the streets than to be called racist. It reminds me of that, um, that meme, and it? it was like sort of the, the cartoon of the boomer going, no, I'm sorry your son had to die, but it was worth it for the shit starny curry you can get delivered at three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's worth it for the obviously it's a small price to pay for diversity, you know? Small price. It's unbelievable, like. So Joe, yeah. what have you got coming up, mate? As we're rounding uh rounding off to the uh, to the night now, where we before we hand over to Sensum at half eight. Um what have you got coming up that you know well, of? It's, it's just, you know, we're just carrying on the same as we normally do. Like, I've started streaming again. Um, yeah, I, tried to do a, um, I tried to do a stream on Odyssey yesterday. But um, be, what happened is I've only got about 230 people following me on Odyssey, right? All my videos that I put on YouTube were automatically uh, copied onto Odyssey. Um, and I want to build that app because I feel that we may be getting chucked off YouTube anytime soon, you know? Yeah. I think yeah, Stan is going to chuck us off most platforms. So yeah. I'm trying to, I thought, oh, I'll do a stream to Odyssey. And then if people want to watch it, they'll obviously they'll join Odyssey, won't they? Right. So I would try to go live and it wouldn't let me. It went right. right through to the bit where it says go live and then it wouldn't do anything. So I had to jump over onto YouTube, right? Um, uh, but when when the stream finished, 
it had 470 won. I think it was 470 won views when it finished after two hours, like, you know? And now it's gone up to about 1,200. So that was really good. Like, so I'm going to start doing more streams. The thing is down here, it's, it's just when the winter comes, it just rains all the time, like, you know? So mm -hmm. we're going to carry on doing the demos like we normally do. Um, but we're gonna just have to get soaked, I think, because it's just that's just the way it is in the winter. Like, yeah, you know? well, you know, skin's waterproof. <clears throat> but we got like loads of people um who were doing stuff in Clinetley and we're trying to get them back involved, like you know. Um that's all we can do is just keep on, like you know, because a lot of people have shit themselves from these arrests and that, you know. And like I say to people, listen. If you're not going on the internet threatening people and racially abusing people, they can't nick you. It's as simple as that, like, you know? We've got a right yeah. to protest. We've got a right to have political opinions. So I'm carrying on. If I get nicked, I get nicked, like, you know? But I, I'm I'm not doing anything illegal. But a lot of people were scared. So that's what we started. We've upped. We've started doing a lot more of our protests lately to try and show people, look, we're doing it. We're not getting arrested, are we? It's not turning into a riot, you know what I mean? Just come out, yeah. like, and it's working. A lot of people are coming back out slowly, like, you know? But that's all we can do is just carry on, isn't it? Yeah. John Palmer makes a good point there. And uh, while I'm talking about John Palmer, he's our guest next Sunday, so make sure you're here from 7 p.m. Uh, he says, what about, um, have you in, uh, looked into going live on the Twitter spaces? They seem to be sort of getting good traction. Yeah, I'll look into that. Like, you know, I get good views on uh, YouTube, like, you know, but I think we all need backups, like, because yeah. I just think <clears throat> that Stammer won't be happy until he yeah, silences silence us, silence. like, you know? No, you know? Telegram's got a uh, huge target on its back right now as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So, hey, yeah. Jim. Here's another one from Joe just before we go, and then we'll finish off with a, an amuse bush. Uh, where was where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Oh, I'm gonna say to this, look, I can't uh, help thinking there might be some sort of agenda at play here. I just can't seem to put my finger on what it is, though. What do you reckon? You were muted, Dan. I couldn't hear what you were saying. Like, so I can't can't think what they might be trying to promote there. No, but you know the thing is, right? They keep telling us we need diversity, right? We are the most diverse race on this planet, right? White people, you know. And you had, did you see the debate with um, Lawrence Fox and Steve Laws the other night? Yeah. Like, you know. Yes. My God, alive! Like, you know what a cretin he is. You know. It's just like he was he was sort of saying, should we deport people who came here during the Norman invasion then? And all this sort of shit, you know? It's just mm -hmm. like he, he's like a lefty. He is literally it's willfully like, ignorant. Yeah. Well the thing is, is to, to make it simple for these people, is the white people are a mixture of a few different, you know, like Anglo Saxons. Uh, Celts, the ancient Britons, we're all Thank Northern you. Europeans, right? You know, and we are the indigenous people of Europe, right? And they can say, oh, no, no, this and that, Romans, this and Roma, that. Everyone that invaded this country back in the day, they were the same race as us, near enough, right? The people who were invading us now they couldn't be more different from us, right? And we've got all the diversity that we need, you know? It's just like we need to be left alone in our own spaces. And this is what I can't see what is wrong with, you know, they can have their countries and we'll have our countries. That's how it should be. And I don't see that as an extreme viewpoint. I really don't like, you know. No, well, it's not. Right, Joe, thank you so much for coming on with us tonight. Um, I'm, where are we? September. I'm sure you'll be back on before the end of the year, mate. Absolutely. I'll reach out to you in a couple of months' time and get a date in the diary. But keep sending the um, anything our way that you need uh, highlighting. And, yeah, no um, problems. Yeah, it was great to talk to you, pal. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You, um, you've got a lot of respect in our movement. So, uh, If people want to follow me on Telegram, it's my page is Welsh Nationalist. Yes. yes. Get follow. If you're on Telegram, get following. 
Um, next week is John Palmer, the 15th. The week after that is Black Pigeon Peeled. And then we're back to the Angry Bootneck again. So, um, yeah, let's um, yeah, let's put a big Joe in the chat there, J-O. Big Joe. And uh, it's going to be Sensum up next. 